When we talk about NVIDIA on Linux, the first mistake is thinking this is about sympathy or antipathy between companies and communities. It never was. This is a structural collision between two profoundly different visions of what it means to integrate software and hardware. Linux was born with a very precise idea. The kernel is the center, and everything around it must be understandable, maintainable, recompilable, adaptable over time. Not because of ideology, but because of technical survival. The Linux kernel does not offer a stable ABI for the internal kernel interfaces used by drivers. Think of it this way. Every new kernel version can change how drivers talk to the system, how they manage data, how they lock resources. It's a deliberate choice that allows rapid evolution, code cleanup, continuous improvements. Linux protects the interface toward applications and users, sure, but for drivers inside the kernel, no guarantees. You're on your own. This is where the first clash with NVIDIA begins. NVIDIA for decades built its value on closed drivers, a huge proprietary stack, total control over hardware-software interaction. On Windows, this model works beautifully because the ABI is stable, Microsoft freezes interfaces, the driver is conceived as an external package you just plug in. On Linux, this approach is inherently fragile. The historic NVIDIA driver has always been out of tree, meaning it lives outside the kernel's main code base, like a separate bolt-on piece that must constantly be refitted. It's tied to specific kernel versions, dependent on workarounds, shims, compatibility layers. Every kernel update becomes a potential fracture. Not because Linux breaks things on purpose, but because it refuses to freeze for any vendor. And this is where DKMS comes into play. DKMS is basically a little mechanic that rebuilds the driver for your exact kernel version every time the kernel changes, so the system can still boot with graphics working. But here's the thing. DKMS is not a convenience. It's a structural patch. It's the visible symptom of an integration that remains fundamentally fragile. This is where the myth is born. NVIDIA doesn't collaborate with Linux. The reality is more uncomfortable. NVIDIA collaborates, but on its own terms, while Linux does not accept external conditions on the kernel. The community doesn't ask NVIDIA to give away code. It asks for something more dangerous, losing control. And that's why for years the only open alternative was Nouveau, the reverse-engineered driver. Incomplete documentation, opaque firmware, limited performance not due to incompetence but due to information asymmetry. Power management, clock speeds, internal telemetry, all locked down. Nouveau was fighting blindfolded, trying to guess how the hardware actually works. This tension was never resolved. It was only postponed until Whalen made the problem impossible to ignore. With Sorg, NVIDIA always worked. Not well, not elegantly, but it worked. Why? Because Sorg is a monolithic server, permissive, full of fallbacks, implicit behaviors, hidden synchronizations, an environment where a proprietary driver can sneak in and do black magic as long as it produces a final frame. And often Sorg would mask synchronization problems presenting a valid frame anyway, even when timing was wrong. It worked, but it hid errors under the surface. Wayland is the opposite. Wayland is not a classic graphics server. It's a minimal protocol that says one very simple thing. I don't guess anything. I don't correct anything. I don't synchronize for you. Every responsibility is explicit. Buffers, timing, synchronization, presentation. If timing is wrong, you see it immediately as flickering or stuttering. That's why many bugs that had always existed only emerged with Wayland. They were no longer being hidden by Xorg's forgiving nature. And this is where NVIDIA started to seem broken. For years, the main problem was one, implicit sync versus explicit sync. Think of implicit sync like two people assuming the other is ready, while explicit sync is a clear handshake, now it's safe, now you can present the frame. Many open drivers like Mesa, AMD, Intel were already working well with explicit synchronization mechanisms. The NVIDIA driver, historically, did not. Practical result for the user, flickering, stuttering, input lag, frames presented out of time, different behaviors between compositors. It wasn't Wayland being immature. It wasn't NVIDIA being incapable. It was a lack of architectural alignment, two systems speaking different languages. There's also another piece of the story worth telling, EGL streams. 
EGL Streams was NVIDIA's way of delivering frames to the compositor, a special pipeline that required compositors to support a NVIDIA-specific path. It wasn't technically broken, but it forced the ecosystem to follow a path used only by NVIDIA. GBM1 instead, and GBM is the shared standard way most of Linux passes GPU buffers around, so compositors can support one common route instead of maintaining two separate worlds. It was a common convergence point, not because it was perfect, but because it was shared. And in the Linux ecosystem, that matters more than technical perfection. Wayland compositors didn't want to insert vendor-specific hacks, simulate Zorg, introduce special paths for a single vendor. And NVIDIA didn't want to deeply rewrite its stack, expose too much of the internals, lose legacy compatibility. For years, it was a ping-pong game, bug reports bouncing between NVIDIA developers and compositor maintainers, temporary workarounds breaking at the next release, users going back to Zorg cursing. Until one thing became evident, Wayland would not turn back. Major distributions started setting it as default. GNOME, KDE Plasma, all modern compositors were pointing there. The market was going in that direction, and NVIDIA found itself facing a choice, adapt or fall behind. And then comes the turning point. May 2024, Driver Series 555, NVIDIA finally introduces full support for explicit sync. It's a watershed moment. After years of promises, hacks, partial solutions, finally the missing piece materializes. An explicit sync isn't just about visual smoothness. It reduces race conditions where frames arrive out of order. It lowers input latency, especially in gaming and multi-monitor setups. It's a deep model change, not just a graphical tweak. From there on, better integration with compositors, progressive approach to the Linux first model. GBM, DRMKMS, which is the kernel side of display control that actually sets modes and drives monitors, explicit sync, all pieces converging toward an architecture finally coherent with the rest of the Linux graphics stack. That's why today Wayland on NVIDIA is finally usable and often stable. Gaming works. Differences between vendors are shrinking. Not because someone won, but because one of the two worlds accepted to change. And the direction is clear. The missing pieces are closing instead of opening. For over 15 years, talking about open NVIDIA drivers meant pronouncing one word, Nouveau, and for just as long, Nouveau was seen as a failure. But this reading is historically unfair. Nouveau was never a project born to compete on equal terms with the proprietary driver. It was a reverse engineering project, built without complete documentation, without access to firmware, without truly knowing the internal behavior of the GPUs. Nouveau wasn't slow because it was badly written. It was slow because it fought blindfolded. The breaking point arrives when NVIDIA changes strategy. Not out of idealism, but out of necessity. With modern GPUs, NVIDIA introduces the GSP firmware. Think of GSP as a small computer inside the GPU that takes over tasks that used to happen in the driver, making the driver simpler, but also moving more logic into firmware. This changes everything. Suddenly, the kernel doesn't need to know every detail of the hardware. Many operations become firmware-side black boxes. The interface stabilizes. And it's ironic. Part of the progress comes from moving more logic into the firmware, that is, into an even more opaque black box. It's not a total liberation, it's a reallocation of control. But this reallocation makes something new possible. And this is where Nouveau stops chasing the past and starts changing shape. The real paradigm shift has a precise name, NVK. In simple terms, NVK is the open Vulkan driver layer, built in Mesa, designed to speak the modern graphics language first. And it's important to understand one thing. NVK is not born as Nouveau's successor in the classic sense. NVK is born with a radical choice. Let's stop implementing native OpenGL. Let's start from Vulkan. Why? Because Vulkan is explicit, it's modern, it better reflects real hardware, it integrates perfectly with Wayland, it avoids decades of historic OpenGL workarounds. In practice, NVK avoids all the historical swamp that had sunk Nouveau. NVK talks to the kernel through Nouveau, but the heavy, complex, performant part lives in user space, where the interface is stable, code can evolve rapidly, the Mesa community is already very strong. This means something huge. For the first time an open NVIDIA driver is not structurally disadvantaged. And it must be said clearly, 
NVK is not designed to beat the proprietary driver today in benchmarks. It's born to be maintainable, integrable, and coherent with the Linux stack, so it won't break with every future evolution. It's a different vision of priorities. Here comes the stroke of genius, Zinc. Zinc is basically a translator. It makes old OpenGL apps run by converting their calls into Vulkan, so you don't need a full native OpenGL driver. Instead of rewriting OpenGL for NVIDIA, Mesa uses Zinc. It sounds like a crazy idea, but it works surprisingly well. The flow becomes OpenGL, Zinc, Vulkan, NVK, GPU. Why is this so powerful? OpenGL remains compatible for legacy applications. Vulkan does the serious work. NVK handles the hardware. Less duplicated code, fewer bugs, less dark magic. And there's a deep structural advantage. With Zinc, Mesa avoids maintaining two complete OpenGL implementations. Less duplicated code means fewer bugs, fewer regressions, and faster development speed in the long term. It's a huge technical debt savings. This approach would have been unthinkable 10 years ago. Today it's realistic, maintainable, and already working in many cases. And here's a fact worth knowing. Mesa 25.1 officially declares NVK plus Zinc as OpenGL 4.6 conformant. And on Turing plus GPUs, it sets it as default instead of the old Nouveau GL stack. It's no longer experimental. It's no longer for the curious. It's the official path. And that's why we're seeing something unprecedented. Wayland Desktop with Open NVIDIA drivers, OpenGL applications working without a native OpenGL driver, Vulkan becoming the true universal language of Linux graphics. But careful, this is not the happy ending yet. NVK is not yet at the level of the proprietary driver in pure performance. It lacks some advanced extensions. It still depends on closed firmware. It's not ready for all professional workloads. But the difference compared to the past is existential. Before, it can't work, everything is missing. Now it already works, time is missing. And that's a huge difference. Plus, there's an often ignored factor. Once the kernel site is open, debugging also becomes possible. Crashes, regressions, interactions with Wayland or with the kernel are no longer total black boxes. This changes the relationship between compositor developers, kernel devs, Mesa maintainers, distributions. For the first time, NVIDIA is no longer a foreign object in the Linux graphics stack. At this point, one thing should be clear. The story of NVIDIA drivers on Linux has never been about frames per second graphical bugs or wrong configurations. It has been, and still is, a question of control. Linux was not born primarily to be convenient. It was born to be readable, modifiable, governable by those who use it. Not because everyone must do it, but because they can do it, if they need to. When the Linux kernel doesn't bend to the needs of a closed driver, it's not fighting an ideological battle. It's saying something very simple. I must be able to evolve without asking anyone's permission. On the other side, NVIDIA has built its success for years on an opposite model. Total stack control, industrial secrets, vertical optimization, reliability guaranteed by lock-in. Both models work, both have their merits, but they don't work together without friction. Wayland made this friction visible. It removed the rugs under which incompatibilities were hidden. It said, no more implicit magic, no more shortcuts, no more assumptions. And at that moment, for the first time, the question was not, does NVIDIA work on Linux? But, who really controls the machine we're using? The opening of kernel modules, the existence of NVK, the use of Zinc, are not romantic concessions. They are adaptations to a technical reality that can no longer be ignored. And it must be said clearly, open here means kernel modules, not the entire stack. User space components, firmware, GPUs older than Turing, a good part remains proprietary or outside the open path. It's not a total liberation. It's a first structural step. Today, for the first time, the future is no longer either performance or transparency, but a continuous negotiation between the two worlds. And this is the most important point. We're not going toward an easier Linux. We're going toward a more coherent Linux. A system where hardware is no longer a foreign body, the driver is no longer an untouchable relic, the desktop is no longer a fragile compromise. Progress doesn't require immobility. The future of NVIDIA drivers on Linux will not be perfect. It will not be linear. It will not be painless. But for the first time, it's not blocked by incompatible principles. And this is perhaps Linux's true victory. 
not forcing everyone to be open source, but forcing everyone to deal with technical reality. When a system is built to be understood, sooner or later, even those who didn't want to explain themselves must start doing so. Because in the end, control is not a battle to win. It's an equilibrium to negotiate. And Linux has always known how to wait.